welcome to Trashy Trashy, where we take a dumpster dive on this week's Garbage People and look at all the trashiest news stories. My name is Erica, and I'm your host. My name is Cassandra, and I'm your other host. What a wonderful night to be recording with you. Oh, oh. Ooh, oh, I love it. I, I can't uh, really com- contribute much to the the song of it as I sound like a dying, you know, a dying wolf, but I loved it. I love a I dying the effort. Wolf. You know, I just imagine they just got into the, the woods and are like, just, just <laughs> Jesus. Just sad, you know. It's fucking sad. <laughs> <laughs> you could have said, like, uh, I'd sound like a, a squeaky tire or something. <laughs> That's just not where my head was. Nope. I sound like, you know, that scene in Game of Thrones where they just uh, poke a sword through a cage and kill one of those wolves. That's my singing voice. Yeah, just, you got to know who you are in life. Sure. You got to know where you stand. Sure. Yeah. I mean, then do we just dive right into it? I'm dying to know why you're trash. Who are you? Okay. I am trash for so, so, I mean, Girl, you know me so many reasons, sure. but I'm going to tell you about somebody else's trash for just a second, though, first. Okay. Name him. <laughs> I, I, I wish I knew his name. So I was on a flight. I was on a work trip to Atlanta. Uh-huh. And so we're in a mask or not mandatory zone anymore. Sure. And so I was walking to, I was still wearing a mask and I was walking on the plane and I saw a guy wearing a hat that said, kindness pass it on okay i was like that's so nice but he wasn't wearing a mask and i was like those two things don't line up my brother i mean kindness is not always equivalent to like consideration can you be kind but not be considerate sure i know a ton of people that are like i'm kind but they like also vote for policies that are like let's separate them babies at the border and let's like not let kids have food it, it you know let's cut but off welfare you and- your bag up yeah absolutely and i know a ton of people that are like super into kindness but do not vote kindly but that's a that's a whole other podcast is other eight why i'm trash is I have noticed that I love to do, if I do fast food, I like variety. Mm-hmm. I like a little of this. I like a little of that. And so what I do is <laughs> I'll order a couple kids meals, oh. but I also will sometimes do the, and what, what do you want? Okay. Uh, got it. Okay. Um, can I get the junior cheeseburger <laughs> and the chicken strips? Yeah. Okay. And the drink on those, hold on. Um, the drink okay got it okay yeah i'll have (laughs) i fake kids i fake two kids like i'm talking on the phone to them and like i'm bringing these home to someone (laughs) hey you gotta do what you gotta do i mean i'm cassandra fake phone call cardenas so i'm like i'm into this i yeah i i fully fake having two children that i am bringing these kids meals home to so that the fast food worker doesn't just see me as someone ordering two meals. Uh, now I have a question, like logistics wise. Is ordering a kids two kids meals cheaper than if you were to order something off of dollar menu? Or are we dealing with a restaurant that has kids meals but does not have a dollar menu? Yeah, we're not talking McDonald's. At McDonald's, I am like a like a DJ. I know how to like <laughs> like swiftly go. The one of these, one of this, a little of that, a little here of this, sure. and put together a meal that is just like an amalgam of like beauty. Like uh-huh. they, they, you know, they do like the Travis Scott meal or the Swat Sawidi meal. They should have an Erica Curry meal, okay, at McDonald's, just with the combinations I can put together. But I'm talking off road. I'm talking regional fast food places that do not have a dollar menu. I'm talking right. You know, we're not talking a national chain i'm talking you know i'm talking your taco buenos i'm talking your brahms mm, mm-hmm, your mm-hmm. cheevers your places that don't have you know dollar menus you know what i'm proud of you and anyone who ever accuses you of not having children in your life you go well i've made some up before so don't <laughs> you feel like shit <laughs> Brandon and Teresa would love to know what you think about them. 
Ugh, I just got an image of a baby named Teresa. <laughs> Those are my made up children name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Teresa was my grandma's name. I have no beef with the name Teresa, but just like <laughs> looking, imagining an infant. It's like, <laughs> it's almost, <laughs> what am I trying to say without invol- in, like insulting my dead grandmother? A baby named Teresa sounds as silly as like a Pomeranian named Teresa. <laughs> it's like, what'd you name that thing Teresa for? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone who's named Teresa. <laughs> There's Teresa's sprinkled all over my Cuban family. You got Teresa's, you got Maria's, you got Josefina's. Everybody gets the same name when you're Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> and my dear, why are you trash? Besides everything I just said, I went to the movies last Friday. I went and saw The Northsman or The Northman, Alexander Skarsgård joint that Mm -hmm. Robert Eggers or whatever. I'll tell you what, this movie did not make a fucking lick of sense, but I don't really, I'm not like into Viking stuff. I went like with a group, you know, I didn't have like a say on what we saw. I would have preferred to see the new Nick Cage movie or something, but we saw the Northmen, and it was fucking insane. I won't spoil anything if I even could. Like I said, I don't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> but, but I got some concessions. Did you ever? When you did you ever get red vines at a movie theater? Can't say that I ever have. Oh my god, you're not a licorice girl. It's not my first instinct. If I'm in a movie theater, I'm gonna go with the chocolate. Okay, okay, I respect mm-hmm. that. I have no chill with like a chocolate, like with like a raisinette. Like you won't, it won't even see the movie. It'll see the previews, Mm -hmm. but red vines is like a classic. My mama trash can loves a red vine too. So a red vine is a string of licorice, but it's hollow. So if you're like fun and you're a kid, you can bite the end off of both things and use it as a straw. And it's awesome. Right. Boom! We've saved the plastic problem. Licorice straws, no more paper straws, red vine straws. So here I am as an adult and I'm like, well, I have red vines, but I have nothing to turn it into a straw with because I got a bottle of water and a glass of red wine. And then I said, nay, Cassandra, you are thinking too small winded. So (laughs) I took a red vine and I used it as a straw in my wine. And my fiance looked at me in a way that he has never looked at me before. I don't know if it was a lot of love or if it was a lot of shame it was too dark to tell but i fucking drank that wine up quick i ate that boozy red vine and i was like "Uh uh-huh i'm garbage i'm gonna say it was just pure lust that he looked at you (laughs) yeah let's say that (laughs) that's again it's tough to say it was dark (laughs) but he is my fiance and we are getting married (laughs) so nanny nanny boo boo Mm -hmm. You have to get married with me. And marriage, wedding, segue. It's what brings us here today. Love. To love. (laughs) To our first story. Yeah? From CNN.com. This was sent in by Adam Cantley, which thank you so much, Adam. And also my aforementioned fiance was like, I tweeted that to your Twitter and I said, okay, honey, we'll give you some credit. So it it was also sent in by Taylor Moore. I, I only went with the first person that sent it in, but it was sent in by multiple people. So we definitely want to give credit where credit is due. (laughs) Yes. Anyways, Florida bride and caterer charged with placing wedding food with cannabis. So uh, there was some lasagna and it was filled with marijuana. So (laughs) bride Danya Shea Savoboda, 42, and caterer Jocelyn Montrese Bryant, 31, have been charged with culpable negligence and delivery of marijuana and violating Florida's anti-tampering act, the affidavit says. The bride agreed and allowed the caterer to lace the food that she served with cannabis, unbeknownst to the attendees, many of whom became very ill and required medical attention. Now, are we talking ill like sick or ill like ill? I think they were like, 
ill but had never experienced marijuana before and they were like I think I'm having a heart attack (laughs) babes just get an open bar you know or like invite only fun people to your wedding if you really want it to party you don't need to literally drug people without their permission a hundred percent this is my worst nightmare yeah so when the deputies asked the husband Andrew whether he had requested or consented to the food being containing cannabis he stared at the deputy with a blank expression for a few minutes before stuttering (laughs) no so maybe he had too much lasagna (laughs) he was like he's like i don't know why this squiggle line is asking me about marijuana (laughs) it was a lasagna only so you know like if you were if you didn't eat the lasagna you were good i would have been fine because i don't eat cheese i have you know cheese most definitely makes me ill but i won't give it up i'm just not a quitter like that you Um, fucking calling me a quitter (laughs) (laughs) bitch oh yeah i'm a quitter because i don't like to feel constipated for three days in a row and like fart so bad that i feel like i need to sell my condo i have the opposite problem (laughs) (laughs) See if it went that way for me. <laughs> Wait, when you say opposite problem, do you mean like you poop a lot and it doesn't smell at all? Oh, I poop a lot. It probably smells, but you know, I, I just have tuned it out. Oh my goodness. So the guests started feeling weird, tingly, fidgety, and had an extremely dry mouth. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the open bar would have been perfect. Mm-hmm. So uh, one woman who attended the wedding told an investigator that while she was at the hospital, she felt paranoid and believed her husband wasn't telling her the truth about other family members and that believed that her son-in-law had died and no one was telling her. She said she became loud and unruly in the emergency room and had to be given sedation to calm down. (laughs) Jesus Christ, this was some fucking wild weed. It's also, I think, a lot of people's first time. (laughs) That's fair. <laughs> the first time I invibed with marijuana, I was I was so convinced that the people I was with might be murderers that because I didn't know them very well that I was like, you know how you know someone's a murderer? They'll have heads in their fridge. So I had to think of a way to ask for a glass of water and excuse myself to go to the kitchen, which is just saying, <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'm gonna go get a glass of water. But I, I had to like concoct a plan. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. <laughs> yes, I was working on this plan for like, but felt like 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> and then I had to like smoothly open the fridge and check for heads. None were there. And I was like, all right, they're not murderers. Good to know. Not yeah. sloppy ones, at least. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was pretty great speaking of sloppy ones when you're smuggling you gotta be smooth according to the insider.com an alleged smuggler with forty thousand dollars worth of gold hidden under his wig and inside his rectum was arrested by custom officers a man was arrested by customs officials at new delhi's indira gandhi international airport on monday after he was caught trying to smuggle melted down gold worth $39,949,000. is what you just All right. All right. I've been, you know, I've been, I've been working all day. $39,947. Yes. That's what I meant to say. Do you know how they caught him? How? He was doing a lip sync for his life. And he <laughs> did a cartwheel to do a new, new a new wig reveal. But instead of putting a second wig on, he forgot that he put his melted down gold. Damn it. <laughs> and then when he was trying to escape, of course, the rest of it fell out of his butt. <laughs> so what actually had happened, uh, he had taken two capsule shaped pouches of gold. Those were lodged in his rectum and then he had a essentially um a toupee on that had gold uh, melted down and it shows the wig being cut away to reveal the pouch of gold that was glued to the top of his bald head 
it's pretty gnarly i'm not gonna lie and that's the thing it's it's not illegal to carry gold on flights but what is illegal is that you must quanti- or declare the quantity that you are importing or exporting and pay the necessary taxes and this is what they were skirting around if you have something in your ass you shouldn't have to pay taxes on it that's my personal belief that's cassandra law you know like that's that's duty free zone if you can get it up there <laughs> tax free this is the duty free zone because if you duty it comes out okay anyways but in change <laughs> just the sheer athleticism alone to get it up there it's just impressive <laughs> you think it takes athleticism to get something up your ass well you gotta bend it's all it's, it's, uh, yeah there's angles yeah it's crazy i have we like started watching or we watched the jackass movies recently we just like decided to watch all of them and the ease of which they were like okay now put this up your ass and they're like oh my god and then they like did it like so fast and i'm like i don't know if i could so quickly just like willy-nilly shove something up my ass hey i i watched the 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 recent the most recent Uh jackass and I just, I like that the, the OG cast at this point is kind of like, um, sure. We'll get hit in the nuts once, but we're mostly going to torture the new people. Yeah. It was smart for them to bring new people to do it. Cause I don't like seeing elders being threatened. Like, I just was like, they're going to hurt themselves. Like it was, like, I, I was, it, I, I truly was like, these are elders and they, They'll go to the hospital with broken bone. It was scary. And they did. And they, they did. did. <laughs> <laughs> it was no longer enjoyable. You know what else isn't enjoyable? What's that? Banning books. A hundred percent. Let's all let's all take it on down to you know where. Florida. Hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Florida man asked school to ban Bible following the state's efforts to remove books. A Florida activist known for his tongue-in-cheek petitions to local government agencies has asked school districts in Florida to ban the Bible. In petitions sent to public school superintendents across the state, Chas Stevens asked the districts to immediately remove the Bible from classroom, library, and any instructional material. In the document, which was shared with NPR, he said additionally... I also seek the banishment of any book that references the Bible. So here's the deal. Down in Florida, their fucking little dildo of a governor, Ron DeSantis, has got all kinds of fucked up rules and laws and shit that are getting passed through. And one of them involves letting parents object to educational materials, which are you fucking kidding me? Whatever. It it has to do with them fighting off critical race theory and having them, you know, not want kids to learn to be gay in second grade or whatever the fuck they're afraid of. But yeah, this guy was like, all right, well, there's a lot of crazy shit that happens in the Bible. So we should probably get rid of that too. Yeah. At one point, one of Noah's sons essentially gets like Noah gets drunk and one of his sons takes advantage of him while he's naked and passed out in a cave. And we don't talk about that enough. There's quite a few stories in the Bible that when I hear them, I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) And they're supposed to be like, "Eh, see, doesn't that make you feel good? And you're like, no, (laughs) the moral of the story is. Yeah, it's like, and and she waited 200 years, and then they finally gave her a son. And I'm like, well, I don't have that lifespan. I don't know. I don't know what I was supposed to learn from this. You know, we don't have to get too deep into this because obviously I'm not in the, uh, not in the market. I'm not in the lane of uh, upsetting people who are religious. I don't mind your religion as long as you leave me alone with it. Mm -hmm. But, uh. It's certainly a cheeky little petition, isn't it? I mean, he cited that he didn't know if it was age appropriate, pointing out its casual references to murder, adultery, sexual immorality, fornication, drunken orgies, rape, bestiality, cannibalism, and infanticide. I don't know. I don't like it. Tell you what, it's a slippery slope. So I think uh, the best thing to do is to 
not let random fucking parents like if you want to determine what your kid learns then homeschool them a hundred percent but i don't yeah (laughs) otherwise uh let public schools be public schooling because holy hell you need it florida (laughs) uh so florida has also taken a stance uh, revoking disney's essentially special conditions but basically where it stands right now like their special tax conditions but what they've done is at this point, Disney has to pay, like, it won't go into effect until Disney pays back its debt. And Disney's like, well, we aren't under a time obligation to do that at this point anymore. So Disney has even more power than it did before this law went into effect. <laughs> and Disney's like, uh, yeah, we'll get around to it whenever. Like Disney's fucking wild. There was a thing about property tax. It was a, some sort of property tax law that I don't think passed because it was going to affect homeowners pretty insane. But the goal was to get comp- like Disneyland, Disneyland, the property tax that they pay is in relation to what they purchased the land for when they originally purchased it. So even so like that big chunk of land is probably worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. And they bring in millions and millions and millions of dollars like by having it there. But their property tax is like probably like seven grand a year or something like that. Pretty crazy stuff. But Anyways, that's enough about Disney. We have to move on. We have to leave Florida and immediately go to the UK. So from the uknews.yahoo.com, a pub landlord posts job advert banning applicants with bad teeth, body odor, and dodgy toes. Who is he going to hire then? (laughs) Gotcha. I have, I have conquered. Uh, No. I'm not going to say conquered. I'm working on it. I have a serious aversion to males in flip-flops that do not have properly cared for toes. I Okay, I understand, and, and I agree. And I live in Southern California. <laughs> and it is a, it's a day, it, I do the work. It's a daily process of just, <laughs> of just being like, that's their life. You got to let it go. That's their life. You got to let it go. And uh, I get it. Dodgy toes. It's a no, no for me as well. My fiance wears flip flops all the time. Cause he's originally from San Diego and uh, he doesn't have dodgy toes, which is fine, which is good because like, he just, he has man feet, mm-hmm. you know, clippy cloppy man feet. But luckily, like in the grand scheme of man feet, they're okay. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I stay on him about it. Yeah, you got it. You, it. Truly, the one thing I'm, I'm a very live and let live. You do you person. But like the thumb is down when it comes to foot care. <laughs> What does that mean? The thumb is down. Oh, like I, I keep a tight thumb on. You want to get a go get a pedicure? Okay. And like Winston's very good about foot maintenance as well. But I am, yeah, I, I am. The thumb is, you know, I put I put my thumb down on it. You're not into feet. That's that's totally fine. Everybody has their thing. Craig Harker, a 35 year old pub landlord. Ask applicants to apply as chefs, kitchen porters, and front of house staff at his chain of George Pub and Grills venues and Tisside. Tisside. On a Facebook post last Thursday, he listed a range of stipulations to potential applicants, including guidelines for their personal hygiene, as he is usually inundated with poorly thought out applications. And so he put together an unusual list of requirements, you know, just in case. He said he didn't want people working for him to stay home, that stay home all day and play FIFA football video game. He said, I'm all for giving people a chance, whether they're, you know, experienced or not. 
but they need to be smart, presentable, clean, tidy, and have good work ethic. I mean, who is to say that, you know, staying at home all day and playing FIFA doesn't necessarily mean you have a good work ethic. Like that's their private time. I think, uh, well, he gets into it a little bit later and he says that you shouldn't just apply just because the job center has asked you to. The amount of people I've interviewed over the years that genuinely don't want to be there is absolute madness. And he said, those that attend with full, with fruity body odor, it's a no-go. Away, give your pits a wash before you come down for an interview. A quick whiff and a spray those bad boys. First impressions count. (laughs) That includes brushing those tusks too. That's teeth, right? Tusks? (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, this is just good job advice. The key part for any interview is first impressions. Don't have mine as this person clearly needs a wash and have me turn in my head because of that naughty breath that stings my cheeks. (laughs) Mucky teeth, a big no-no for me. Give us a smile. eh? If those ganaches are black, then stay black and white. You're all right, especially when front of house greetings our customers as they walk through the doors i mean i know that's just how people talk but that vocab isn't screaming job interview for me either well he he goes on he says you should not turn up to your interview after a session or a big night of drinking and stinking of last night of lager you had at 5 a.m and if you're in an interview get those dodgy looking toes covered up there's no one with a foot fetish here so keep them piggies covered this little piggy stayed at home (laughs) um he's also uh willing to employ vegans as long as you're willing to serve meat so that's nice he doesn't discriminate Mm -hmm. so his facebook page for his his series of pubs has a a jovial tone to it as you can see from his adverts and he has gone viral before um, when he posted an advert asking customers would you punch your ex in the face for a steak so he's just a media whore he's a he's a character he's a card you know what a card would you punch your ex in the face for a steak i i mean i don't i don't think i mean i mean not really like i don't know where like most of them live any like you're thinking about the logistics oh i don't have to like go hunt them down oh okay okay your ex is in front of you and then there's a big old juicy steak in front of you okay there's okay here we'll we'll talk about it in realistic terms okay your ex is there okay and then you have a sizzler steak that was that the stick says medium rare (sighs) okay okay do you punch them in the face is that the only way i get the steak yes god damn this is a sizzler steak marked medium rare no i don't have like animosity to like any ex really you know i I really don't have like uh but god damn i love steak so i mean yeah if that's the consequence for to get me a steak from a sizzler though because a medium rare steak is medium from sizzler i was so i was gonna go up higher with better quality steaks but you caved at sizzler (laughs) I didn't know that. I didn't know there would be higher. I didn't know we were playing a, a incentive game, and I could have held out for like a Taylor's or something. Or... Nope. Sorry. Here's a Sizzler. God damn it! <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm holding out and cracking my knuckles, waiting to sock my ex in the face for a two hundred and fifty dollar steak with flaky sea salt and potatoes. Mm. Should have waited. Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> I. So I, I went to Atlanta this weekend for a work trip and I got, you know, a, a meal a stipend and I chose a hotel that had free breakfast because I'm a smart girl mm-hmm. so I could eat a bigger dinner. So I chose a steakhouse on the Friday night and got myself a, a nice steak and I ordered a steak and potatoes and, you know, and the guy was like, you don't want any vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> Say, bitch, potatoes grow in the ground. Why don't you mind your fucking business? <laughs> like, oh, I said, oh, I, I ordered the 
fried green tomatoes <laughs> and he was like oh, okay all right <laughs> and i was like they said that to you in atlanta yes they're questioning the lack of vegetables for you in the south yes what really the fuck questioned my lack of vegetables <laughs> and i was like okay <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah all right yeah yeah was it good oh so good oh so good it was very good it was very nice yeah it was great uh uh, also while i was in atlanta uh, side note there was a a speakeasy that i learned about a little bar speakeasy but you had to get a password to get in like a code to get in and so i you know i asked the manager at the steakhouse that i was at if he had the code and he was like oh i got the code and he personally walked me from the steakhouse to the speakeasy huh. and like talked to the door guy for me. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. That's very nice of you. You know, but he was like talking up like I go here all the time. Everybody knows my name, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whatever, man. <laughs> thank you. You know, and so the door guy's like, hey, uh, you know, you know, you have the code. You can come in. But like, I don't have a ro- like any room for like one person at the bar. And I was like, oh man, I was like, you know, I, I drink a lot and I tip really well. And he's like, all right, let me see what I can do. And he comes back, you know, after a minute and he's like, all right. And he took me to the members only room in the back, oh. the VIP room, like the, oh. the, the VIP room. And I was like, yes, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> and who was there, but DJ Khaled <laughs> smoking cigars at the speakeasy easy <laughs> referring to himself in third person of course telling stories very loudly about himself but saying dj khaled's not in miami this weekend because of this and i was like wait wait wait." and then i was like googling dj khaled look and i was like that's him but why is he saying dj khaled oh he's talking about himself in third person (laughs) (laughs) it was insane did you join them no i'm not gonna what do i walk over to dj gal and be like how'd you get in do you know the door got you you know the the vip area how many other people were in the vip area i mean maybe 20 of us like yeah all right yeah yeah oh do you know the manager at the steakhouse down the street (laughs) what do i say to him (laughs) holy shit that manager walked you all the way down the street yeah (laughs) weird i I think there was a, a he thought there was a flirtation oh there was not on my end but i was gonna take that if it got me in to the speed hey, yeah do what you gotta do you know yeah. uh i definitely think the person in our next story did that a hundred percent sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do uh dj khaled do what he gotta do <laughs> do what he gotta do <laughs> <laughs> but I know for a fact it wasn't DJ Khaled who did this job because he was not in Florida this weekend. No. From clickorlando.com, a Florida man takes a leak in the store's beer cave and does $113.36 worth of beer damage. Here's what I'm trying to figure out is did he pop the bottles with his urine? Otherwise, that's just peed on beer. You can rinse it off. Erica, waste not, want not. We are in a, a, you know, a time of inflation. You don't just rinse piss off of a beer. That's bad business. All right, I would. T- I'm not saying like sell it to a, a customer, but like that's now employee beer. Why do they have to drink the piss beer? All right, all right. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. <laughs> A 61-year-old Florida man was arrested on allegations of urinating on cases of beer inside the Brevard County store. So he went into the Hop and Pop convenience store and tried to enter the restroom, but it was locked. And then he went into the beer cave, made it look like he was checking the merchandise, but then unzipped his pants and pissed on cases of beer. Six cases in total. I can't tell if this is sad or not because he was like 61, but like... You know, so like it might be sad, but also it seems like he was just trying to fake it. And they're like, oh, what's this? Oh, Cooper's line. Okay, I'm gonna pee on it. And and it what blows my mind is that it was six cases, and and it it feels like it was like a like 
a you can't see me but i'm gesturing like in a, a back and forth motion like with your penis yeah <laughs> with my- i know i'm doing it too now <laughs> listener try it you're mm-hmm. just kind of yeah i think everyone's doing it <laughs> everyone's doing it yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> instead of just like a steady one 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 case stream he was just like you know paint painting around yeah it's a weird vibe uh, for men to take advantage of the fact that they can pee anywhere like just go if, wait for the bathroom because fuck like i wait in bathroom lines i've lost years of my life standing mm-hmm. in bathroom lines before and or just like go pee outside if you're like leave people alone (laughs) this is selfish 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 (laughs) it's just i mean you know it just is what it is i love it like i really do (laughs) i just do (laughs) again i think we should just rinse that those beer off and then now it's employee beer you're 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 entitled to your opinion Rinse it off with hot water. Oh, okay. We're not. We're not talking like water hose, cool water. Like you know, and and beer is a nat or piss is a natural. You know, what is it? A de- a de- disinfectant or the? Uh, I don't. I'm not a doctor, but I'm just saying. <laughs> it's gonna oh, be now a- that you heated up the water, all of a sudden, I think it's fine. <laughs> Uh, you're back on my team no i was never on your team i'm being sarcastic i got a question for you yeah. this next uh article in here is this only in here because this restaurant has a funny name <laughs> yeah okay cool well from redandblack.com a fight breaks out at beef o'brady's <laughs> it's a georgia restaurant and i just liked it <laughs> beef <laughs> beef o'brady <laughs> this this is a like if this is a fast food restaurant it does not have a dollar menu this is you know one where you got to go off menu to to get your your. (laughs) it's just so funny like just like the the o'brady clan and you know uh johnny went off to be a doctor and uh colin o'brady went off to be a scientist and uh john o john o brady did i already have a john John too, O'Brady is a fisherman, and then there's Beef, <laughs> Beef O'Brady, who opened up a restaurant chain. <laughs> That's like you know I you know that house I painted it. Isn't it nice? They don't call me color in the house painter. That that uh, that fence I built it. Isn't that a nice fence? I, I you know they don't call me color in the house paint the uh, fence builder, but. You fuck one sheep. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> this guy's name is like Earl. And they're like, nah, you're beef now. <laughs> you're beef, yeah. But I also love what the men were fighting about that got them into this uh, the, the aggression. <laughs> so so <laughs> the gentlemen were eat two men were eating dinner at Beef O'Brady's. And a beef, fight broke of out. course. <laughs> beef. <laughs> So, according to the victim of the fight, the two men had gone through three pitchers of beer and discussed being able to handle life in prison. The aggressor became angry, leapt out of his seat, and repeatedly punched the victim in the face. Are you telling me that I couldn't make shower shoes out of a newspaper and straws? Is that what you're fucking telling me? Like, what do you get angry about? Let me just say, no one should be getting in fist fights over hypotheticals. No, because they're not real. Shit that happened is why you should be getting in fist fights. And everyone, we go to Beefo, Bra- Beefo Brady's to have a family meal, you know, to have our our family meal of meatloaf and slop. And the fact that from the other table, they're over-serving men pitchers of beer with their beef o'brady fighting about prison my Mm. god what (laughs) has the world come to i (laughs) for anyone who's wondering a beef beef o'brady's is essentially a chili's i'm looking at the website now um their menu is a chili's Um, they also have a beef's rewards program a section for 
beefs careers join the team that's in it to beef it anyway (laughs) this is a weirdly named restaurant but it is a fucking chain every at the bottom of their website it says every neighborhood should have one (laughs) i i'm mad i don't have a beef o'brady's in my neighborhood i mean i don't know we could we could own one i'm looking at the website you and i could franchise we we should franchise a beef o'brady's you get oh you get o'brady on the phone i think i think we uh we got a business kicking yeah our wait, newest wait. location features an open, modern layout that welcomes guests in a way that is unmistakably beefs. <laughs> <laughs> we got two businesses. We got a Beef O'Brady and a Shapewear. So we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you loaded up at Beef O'Brady's, and then we're gonna sell you some Shapewear. <laughs> beefs is more than just a restaurant. It's a social hub. It truly is. It's a lifestyle brand. I love it. I love it. You don't just eat beefs. You are beefs. <laughs> That's what they're going to call us. A couple of beefs. A couple of beefs. Oh, we're going to make I beefed it into a positive phrase. Like people are no longer going to say like, oh, I beefed it. They're going to be like, damn girl, you beefed it. <laughs> we're going to call like gr- tips and gratuity just beefs. Like <laughs> How'd you do tonight? Did you make a lot of beefs? Oh, the IRS takes you know twenty percent of my my beefs every week. <laughs> oh fuck this fucking table! They left beef on beefs. Oh, that's a fun word. Anyway, <laughs> the, the the episode title is just gonna be beef, right? <laughs> it has to be. It has to be beef. B E E. It's what's for dinner. Oh God, why is that so funny? <laughs> okay, for anyone who hasn't turned the podcast off, um, we've got one more story before our dumpster fire from ClickOrlando.com. A Florida TSA agent made up a burglary report to uh, get out of being late for work. So yeah, she G uh, was accused of forging a whole sheriff report to get her an excuse for being late to work just say you threw up or something i don't know like wh- why why go through all the trouble what girl like so she was already on an employee improvement plan uh, for excessive tardiness oh uh, so she I called see. ahead of her shift on march 20th to let her employer know she was going to be late she said that a man with a knife broke into her parents car and then she couldn't provide a case number or business card of the detective so she was asked for her supervisor for a copy of the report that's a little intense yeah like that boss is a little overreaching but i think if you are on an improvement plan i I don't know i I don't know but i guess if you're on the if you're like a tsa agent i suppose that that's different than you know being late to your shift at beef o'brady's <laughs> yeah you got like legit shit to to monitor no one's bringing a you know a a six inch knife through to beef o'brady's or or four ounces of liquid into beef o'brady's you know you don't have to take your shoes off when you come to beef o'brady's please don't actually <laughs> please keep them on because if there's anything that you hate more than um i don't know where i'm going with that i'm just gonna get to the fact that you don't like feet and i was looking for another excuse Mm -hmm. to say beef (laughs) so she took a screenshot of of the document the report and texted it to her supervisor but when she was asked to provide a copy since the photo was cut off halfway through the second page and no incident description was visible the supervisor reviewed the photo or sent the photo to the sheriff's office. They reviewed it and determined it was a fake report. The name and number of the current deputy was on vacation at the time of the alleged report was filed. Oh man, you picked just, you picked the wrong person. You have to do your homework. Ring, ring. Hello. Is this uh, the, um, uh, Polk County Sheriff's Department? Yes. Who am I speaking with right now? Oh, this is uh, Re- Regina Firestone. Great. Thank you so much. Hang up. Who was my report with? Regina Firestone. Like, you know, you got to do your homework. Wow, Erica. I, I don't do crimes. I'm just saying, like, I, I, am, I do follow up. I am thorough. Yeah. I mean, 
even getting caught in white lies. You gotta be, you gotta be there. You gotta, you gotta have the details. Cover your tracks. Do you have any headlines? Oh yeah, I do. I do have headlines. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's uh, let's hear them. Okay. Cool. Okay. From Fox News. A Chicago man attempting to rob a hot dog stand slipped in grease and shot himself in the penis. And just like that, a new Batman villain is born. He is called the Piddler. <laughs> the Piddler. Uh, the Piddler. <laughs> okay, I, I have the same headline. Okay. So man, Illinois man reportedly shoots off his own penis after stealing from a hot dog stand. The stand now advertises its new stickless option to memorialize the event. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I have one more. According to whalesonline.co, a woman married her cat in order to stop her landlord from being able to kick her out for having a pet. It was a beautifully touching ceremony where the couples wrote their own meows. <laughs> Okay, so I I'm have sorry. the same I have the same headline. <laughs> and I said, uh, a woman marries pet cat in a bid to stop landlord from separating. Jennifer Lopez and the cat had recently called off their engagement. <laughs> it's one for the history books. When asked for co- for comment, the landlord said, "You've got to be kidding me." In the In the eyes of the paw, they are husband and wife. (laughs) I went on a run. I went on a bit of a run. And you didn't get meows? No. Damn it. (laughs) Well, it's great. You got all the other ones. Oh, that's fucking funny. All right. I got, I I got, I got one. Okay. From TampaBay.com. Florida sheriff encourages people to shoot burglars to save taxpayer money. He said, you can just sprinkle a little crack on him afterwards if you make a mistake. That's what we do. Ooh, spicy. I got got one more. Okay. (laughs) I'm really trying to work my brain. Oh, good. From CNN.com. Fire crews rescue Washington woman after she falls headfirst into an underground toilet to retrieve her cell phone. She was able to find her phone and call 911 after 20 minutes. Welcome to 5G by Verizon. Oh, oh shit. Are you trying to say Verizon has bad service? Yeah. Nailed them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, an AT&T bitch myself. Mm. I like Verizon. Yeah. I don't but know. hey, I like the joke too. Each their own, you know. I was I was in Sacramento a couple weeks ago and we went hiking and I had to pee, which I'll tell you what, there is nothing on this earth I hate more than a fucking park bathroom. But so if I'm in one, it's because I really am desperate. So my friend and I went to go use the bathroom and I have never in my life been in a bathroom that smelled so bad it didn't look dirty but it i've never ever experienced something like this so i was peeing like obviously like squatting i wasn't gonna fucking touch it oh god i can't even think about it too much Mm. and i started like gagging involuntarily and so my friend is outside the door and she's like are you gagging And so she was like making like, she started laughing, which made me laugh, but like, you can't laugh without like taking in more air. And it was, it was fucking (laughs) trauma. (laughs) Like I, uh, I couldn't even do that story. Like with the hiker falling in the (laughs) toilet because I was too like triggered. Uh, Cause Audrey, you might want to tune out for like 30 seconds, but I don't know if I've talked about this, but I've. I, I need to like relearn how to brush my teeth. I, I can't seem to brush my teeth recently without making myself like, like oh. gag and throw up. And so Winston had bought me a cake the other day, like a slice of cake, not an entire cake. And it was a rainbow sprinkle cake. And I was brushing my teeth <laughs> and I just, <laughs> I had the door open because we were talking and the toilet lid was closed. <laughs> And so we're just talking and I'm like, ah, 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 ah. 
And then I just go, oh no. <laughs> I didn't get the toilet seat open. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> so there was rainbow all over my toilet and he's like what what happened are you okay and I was like yeah I'm fine I just like did the thing where I like gagged myself brushing my own teeth <laughs> bitch puke in your sink <laughs> I've done that but I was trying to go to the toilet because I got tired of having to clean the sink out so you decided to clean your floor instead. But I forgot that the toilet seat was down. <laughs> no, it was just because it's up ninety nine percent of the time. Have you ever acts like just been going to like rushing to the bathroom because you have to pee so bad, or like it's the middle of the night or something, and the toilet seat's down, and you piss on the toilet seat, <laughs> like you pee on the lid. <laughs> what? When I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I know I've done it as a kid. I feel like I've done it as an adult too. It's like honestly, I don't know what's worse. If like the toilet seats down, you piss on the lid, or if the too many toilet seats are up and you fall through. <laughs> you fall th- I would rather fall through than have to clean up. Oh anyway. Okay. okay. All right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. we got enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have to learn how to brush my teeth again. Anyway. I will say one thing though, and it's mm-hmm. really upsetting. Maybe I should throw it out. No, I'm going to stick to what I'm throwing out. Okay. But there seems to be something going on on TikTok mm-hmm. where people are like trying to normalize shitting in the shower. No, no, that no, no. It, it's come up twice now, and it's not even like on my algorithm. It's like people who are on my algorithm like podcasts or something and they bring it up and but like these people being like admit it everyone poops in the shower no and then everyone then like so the question is when you poop in the shower because we know you do how do you get rid of it and i'm not like is this is this a trolling thing or are there seriously people out there like in like a lot of people out there who are like yeah you shit in the shower no no that has to be a troll that has to be a troll hoping people have done it and are collecting answers on people you know what i mean like that cannot be real i just i hope it goes away because you know how you get rid of it you move homes and states and then you change your identity so that no one knows that one time you shit in the shower and then you left a turd there and then moved your entire apartment. <laughs> the logic behind it mm. is insane. I don't, I don't. Mm-mm. All right. Anyways, fine. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's time for the dumpster fire of the week. Oh my God. From the sun.co.uk, a bungling U.S. spook. Is that really what they're called? Yes, yeah, spies were called spooks, but it's uh, we learned around Halloween that spook is like racist, like has racist origins, and we probably shouldn't use it anymore. But like spies were called. Like in World War II and stuff, it there was a like a yeah, spies are called spooks anyway. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna call it spy. Mm-hmm. So a spy left, he's a US spy and he left UK military secrets online after he uploaded them so that he could work from home. Relatable. I mean, listen, a lot of places are starting to return to office. <laughs> a lot of people have a lot of hesitancy and are not excited about that. Mm-hmm. but this guy <laughs> <laughs> he fucked up he fucked up big time <laughs> so adam sightsees and i'm saying his name out loud because i don't know if he will be like if you will be able to google him in the future or <laughs> i i worry that he will be disappeared <laughs> so he left a dossier including details of the RAF's 125 million pound typhoon jet 
a named U.S. counterterror staff based here in the U.K. So he transferred it uncrypted, put it on public view, and then has feared to forgotten it, a.k.a. gift wrapping it for China and Russia. I mean, this is arms deals that were explode or exposed, unmasked national security agent staff in the US, NATO, Ukraine, UK. Guy, you want to be a spy? You don't have a work from home job. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you have a work from like the back of a limousine and then you're jumping out of a plane. I mean, I know I'm talking about James Bond and most spy work is like sitting on a bench with a newspaper. And then you go, the sky is lovely today. And that means some code to some other spy that you're sitting next to. And the spy work is boring. Uh, a source told the newspaper, these types of errors end careers and possibly his <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty stupid. You know, he's probably going to end up with bleach blonde hair, witness protection, working as a manager at a beef O'Brady's in Iowa or something but this was an oopsies this was an oopsies a huge oopsies he uploaded them in 2020 to trello a file sharing website that's like using we transfer to send yourself the fucking nuclear codes yeah uh so the sun was alerted of the data's presence online and found it in seconds from a google search oh my god they alerted Whitehall. They told the U.S. who scrambled to remove all the files. <laughs> uh, so all of the spy sites as social media have been deleted. Yeah, I don't think this guy exists anymore. I, I genuinely... <laughs> Y'all? <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> How could you be so... St- like, honestly, like, I could lose my job... If I like accidentally leak a TV show, you know, mm-hmm. and like I could go to jail and mm-hmm. that's like my stupid job, you know, but I don't work for the government. No, like this I- guy must be in super jail. <laughs> yes. Like, like jails we don't even know about like off, off the grid, off site jails, like black yeah. sites, like CIA black sites, like yeah. redacted paperwork jails. <laughs> <laughs> when you're like what do my taxes go to this kind of shit <laughs> yeah this guy's fucking beef brady's meals <laughs> they're grinding him up right now oh my god <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> like i'm genuinely scared for this man's life like this is such a stupid mistake but yeah but like, hey, i mean i get it i want to work from home too i mean we all i mean we all do who wants to commute sir who yuck Small God. talk over bad coffee? No thanks. I know. Oof. Let's do a quick Google search for ourselves. Let's do an investigation. This is a trashy, trashy investigation. Oh, his LinkedIn is still up. Nope, it does not exist. The, the the ghost site of his link, like his. <laughs> do you have a LinkedIn as a spy? <laughs> yes, it says foreign military sales. <laughs> uh oh sme like uh yeah so basically linkedin is still if it says it's there but when you click into the link it's like this ain't this ain't a site <laughs> yeah what are you looking for uh, what, what, yeah, yeah uh, don't get don't get your computer flagged yeah yeah <laughs> i don't want the cia to come knocking on my door <laughs> like why are you so concerned about him <laughs> what are you worried about who told you about the CIA uh, super channels? <laughs> right. Sir, I just watch a lot of TV. Yeah, you, you and everyone else. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, Cass, what are you hoarding this week? Okay, I feel weird about hoarding this, but there's a new series on Apple TV that I'm kind of digging. It's called We Crashed. Um, yes yeah it's about it's about the we work guy which i think we've talked about on this podcast adam newman yeah yeah so Anne hathaway's killer in it which i mean like good for her for coming back and like just crushing it i feel weird about hoarding it because jared leto is like such a fucking monster 
and it's like such an open secret in hollywood that he is like a psycho who like has a cult and fucks around with young girls and stuff whatever i mean it's good it's a good show and he's he's good in it and it would just be nice if he could just be a good actor and not a fucking monster but um yeah apple tv we crashed i watched the pilot it was really good i'm gonna probably keep watching i'll i'm sure i'll be done with it by the end of the week i'm gonna binge the shit out of it yeah i it's it uh, that's my hesitancy around the series as well uh, my only critique having followed this story for a long time and like followed podcasts and articles about it adam newman is like six seven <laughs> and jared leto is like you know five ten six foot you know and it's like his adam's presence <laughs> Like his height presence, I think, was a huge part of his charisma and ability to get people on board with his, you know, selling, repackaging real estate as a tech company and like his insanity. And I think I'm like, go chair little up at a couple of Apple boxes. Like, <laughs> like I think I think he should look taller in the series. But anyway, but that's my only critique. All right. What no. are you hoarding? I'm hoarding Barry on HBO. It's back, baby, for a third season. Yes. For those of you who do not know, sorry, Barry is a comedy drama series that stars Bill Hader from Oklahoma. And he is a trained killer, like he's a like an assassin, but he starts taking acting classes and becomes an actor but also is like a killer and involved with the mob and it's it's just really funny very great henry winkler is in it as like his drama teacher a lot of really funny comedians are in it it's really it's just really charming and funny and yeah i really like barry so yeah that show is excellent if you haven't watched barry you gotta watch barry it's 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 really fucking good yeah one of my friends is an editor on it i have friends that are in it uh it's it's really great yeah. i have a friend who is a writer on it wow we're just so circling. Every, yeah i guess we just know everyone in hollywood we're, we're just practically a-listers at this point <laughs> i mean we are connected <laughs> <laughs> what are you throwing away the weather in utah mm. it's so good no it's too unpredictable. I'm going to a wedding this weekend, which if you're hearing this, I've already been to the wedding. And girl, I don't know what the fuck to wear to this shit because the weather keeps changing. And maybe this is my fault, but I don't really like to invest in winter clothing because I don't like the winter. So it's springtime right now and i mm -hmm. feel like i should be able to wear my spring wedding attire but some days it's like this the weather's gonna be 71 and i'm like great 71 will be beautiful over there and then the next day it'll be like it's gonna be 55 and i'm like excuse me so as of this recording when we land at 10 a.m., it's going to be 44 degrees. Mm. But by the wedding reception or whatever, whatever point in the wedding I'm going to be in at 6 p.m., it's going to be 68. Huh? It reminds me of the wedding uh, of the weather in Colorado, which is also very unpredictable. And I don't fucking like that either. So I'm just a spoiled SoCal bitch. And I like my weather to be, you know, temperate and easy. Mm -hmm. Um so that I don't have to bring multiple outfits to this wedding. I get it. I'm sorry. Well, if I have, I'm sitting in a closet surrounded by more coats than one human being could ever need. If you ever want to borrow some cold weather accoutrement and, and some delights that would be stunning for a Utah spring, winter, cold weather, weather. Uh, come on down to Erica's closet full of uh, shit she never gets to wear in Southern California. Um. Okay. Well, I'll take that off air. Yeah. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah. yeah. What are you throwing away? I'm throwing away 
And guys, I've known they're garbage, but I just, uh, I just put it deep down. But y'all, I we got to throw away Diane Twerd, the South African rave rappers. Uh, uh, Ninja and Yolandi are bad people. Like they're not like just kind of doing a bit like they're genuinely bad people. And I read, I watched an article or like a video today by like a news interview by one of their adopted children. And if their claims are correct and uh, essentially they are horrible people and they just kind of adopted these kids to be in music videos for their weird looks and like didn't really care about raising them as people or children or helping them as like humans at all and were abusive and like like every time they go to a music festival they cause trouble they start fights they're pieces of shit to people people refuse to play music festivals if they're a part of it like uh, like if there's smoke there's fire and like this is not the first time that people are like they're bad people but y'all i i have to stop listening to diane Twitter. why are they so why are they so shitty i mean like i'm l- reading about this the one song i've heard of them is like i think you're freaky and i like you mm-hmm. um but like holy guacamole like there's all kinds of really fucked up shit that like about like sexual assault and drugging people and trafficking them and i didn't know that oh yeah, I just knew kind of about like the fights and and like the like like assaulting people possibly, and they were like horrible to work with on the set of Chappie. What's Chappie? That movie. Oh, that one movie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. yeah. Uh, like they're, they're just. Uh, it's a Neil Blomkin movie. They're just they're bad people. And yeah, I mean, gotta go. I, it's crazy that they still work. I think their novelty, I think, I hope has kind of died down. Like, I've seen them live. I've gone to their concerts. Wow. I've, I've, th- I've thrown it out for Diane's word. Like, yeah, I just, I, I, I got to cut it off. Like, no more. So. Okay. Yeah. Proud of you. That's, you got to do the work. Yep. All right. And where can the people find you? You can find me. Sorry, I'm just double checking where they can actually find me. You can find me on this podcast, Trashy Trashy Podcast. Uh, you can find me on the Nooner Podcast, on the Smodcast Network. Also, the movie Violet that I was in with Olivia Munn is on Hulu now. Yay! Um, and I think it's on Showtime too. Someone called me today and they said that they saw me on Showtime. So, like, just like playing on Showtime. So that's kind of cool. If you want to watch kind of a freaky movie, I recommend Violet. Violet. We'll we'll put it in our social media. I'll find it and we'll we'll, we'll blast it out. What about you? Where do they find you? At Iconic Erica Curry on Instagram or at Gilly Gal on the Twitter. The photo I posted on Instagram, if you're hearing this last week, uh, if you're hearing this on Monday, it would have been last week. My friend said, This is the photo that they'll use if you ever go missing and or join a cult. (laughs) This is the photo that they'll, they'll use to describe you. And I said, I thank you. I think. And yeah, so that's the content there. That's the content I crank out. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You can find this podcast at trashy, trashy pod on Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at our website, trashy, trashy podcast.com. And you can email us at trashy, trashy podcast at gmail.com. Send us uh, stories. You can tell us why you're trash. All of these contributions we love so much. Please leave us a five-star review. It helps us out so much. If you don't feel inclined to send a five-star review and you want to maybe give us something lower, shoot us an email let's talk about it because you know it kind of fucks us over and i I don't know is it is that bad to say no i I, it truly messes with the algorithm (laughs) like it like we we are open to discussion and critique but are you you mad at us like what are you mad (laughs) uh what's the problem if you you can also find us on tiktok at trashy trashy pod Yes, we're working on that. Soon there'll be content on that TikTok. Uh, (laughs) 
you can, uh, yeah, you can find us all those places. You can also leave us, like she said, a five-star review on Spotify or the iTunes chart and tell a friend. It truly does help. Thank you for the reviews so far. Thank you for the listens. We love you, baby trash cans. Hey, Cass. What's going on, girl? Stay garbage. You stay garbage, girl. I will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.